Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna check out Toddzilla's band. He's playing at the Eastside Bowl in Nashville, Tennessee. He's got an awesome tribute to Prince. It's a three hour show and it's gonna be awesome. Today on the channel, we're going to check out Toddzilla's band here at the Eastside Bowl. He's going to do a tribute to Prince. Do a blackout. Like, like at the end of the song? At the end, at the end of the okay. song before it, you do a blackout, and then, then when you... When, before when the, the song, do a blackout, and then at the end of the song, do another blackout. Uh, no, no. In, in other words, all the ones that are in black... Yes, sir. When, when, when this song is, yep. blackout. Okay, cool. Yeah. Come back. Man. All right, here backstage, we've got the guitars. This is Yoda. What's up, guys? Come here. Say hey, Yoda. Hey, what's up? Sorry, I'm blinding you with my lights. It's, it's right. dark back here, man. So what have we got here? Well, this is my my famed Bugs Bunny PRS. And no, I didn't do that to this guitar. It came like that. There's a special story to that. I'll tell you all later about that. This is the one that you won, huh? This is the one I won. Yeah. People coming through. All right, let's take a look at some of these. These are your other guitars for tonight? Yep. Let's take a look, man. I saw you playing this one here in Soundcheck. Yep, this is the, the Ernie Ball Axis. This is better, better. Less than a year old, so. Love the color on that. Thank you. And then this is my main one. I'll play this for most of the show. This is the blue PRS. This is a CE24. I think it's a 2017 model. I think that's right. Yeah, I like the color, man. It's cool. Yeah, me too. It's kind of that, that whale blue. Yeah, I like that one too. USA CE24? Yep. Of course. I'm digging it, man. So three guitars tonight, huh? Yep, that's it for tonight. Want to show me your rig? Yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look at the rig. All right, so let's start, start with the pedal board here. It's nothing too fancy. You only got like five pedals plus, or four pedals plus the tuner, and you got the switch pedal from the amp itself. It switches channels from, you know, clean, dirty, and extra dirty. Yeah. So you find with this show pretty much keeping it simple is the way to go? Yeah. Or? I've got a nice, chorusy, clean sound, and then I can dial it in a little more with my yeah. treble for the clean stuff. Yeah. If it needs to be like a tele-type sound. Right. But other, and then I've just got the regular dirty sound from the amp, nothing else. I'm running the, the EVH 5153 with the EL34s in it, just a 212 nice. cabinet with the regular head, nothing hot rotted. That's about it. Got an angle so you can uh, hear a oh, little yeah. bit better. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you got this angle. It's got the legs on it that come out. All right. I see. Just like those old Oh, yeah, the cabinet's got the legs on it. Yep. Sweet. And it's got a lock there too, so the head doesn't fall off, which I thought was pretty cool. They thought of that ahead of time when they designed it, you know. Yeah, it's cool how they got the. Yeah, <laughs> you absolutely. can just bolt the head down onto the cabinet, yeah, so you absolutely. can just tilt it back. Right. And that's then, great. And then I've, you know, I've got the horn too, but that doesn't really go with your guitar channel. <laughs> no, that's cool. But you, uh, you also play saxophone on how many songs? Uh, just on, I think it's three tonight. Three songs, cool. Yeah. Awesome. You gonna take a solo? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's what it's for. There's like horn solos at the end of like three songs that we do in the show. Not very long, but it, they're, they were on the record, so they're vital parts of the show. So it's pretty cool. What would you say your favorite part of the show is? Oh man, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, 
I love doing this one live. V control is pretty fun to play live. I got you. It's fun music, man. The show keeps on moving. I understand you guys are going to do a lot of talking or nothing. It's going to be straight three hours through. Pretty much, yeah. There'll probably be a little bit here and there if something goes sideways and our title say hi to the people, you know, that kind of thing. But there's not going to be a lot. We, supposedly, we got it dialed in so that we don't have to waste a lot of time between songs and switch a bunch of stuff out. We've been working really hard on the transitions, you know. Cool, cool. Well, man, I'll let you get something to eat. I know you're hungry. All right. Hopefully, I can grab Todd here. Yes, grab man. the Zilla Meister here in a bit. Thanks for coming out, Marty. Really appreciate it, buddy. Of course, man. Thanks for having me. Sure, no problem, man. Anytime. Have a great show. Thanks. It's getting close. This is a really cool stage setup here. Check it out. Todd Zilla pulls out all the stops when he does a show. Got to run a U-Haul for this stuff. Got to respect the hustle and the passion. That's what it's all about. A lot of rehearsal, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of time spent to put this together. All for the love of music. All right, so here we are with the man himself, Todd Zilla. Uh, all right, hey, Todd. How you doing? Man, thanks for having me out here. I'm looking forward to the show. Um, I understand that this may be the only time that Nashville gets to see this performance this year, is that correct? Well, maybe, yeah, maybe. My, my Christopher, the drummer, he is, um, he's the, the touring drummer with Accept, the metal band Accept, you know, balls to the wall, uh, Christopher Williams. And, and he does some such amazing stuff that I wouldn't do it without him. So he's going back on tour, and so we might have to just sort of not do it for a while. But as you can see, it's so much work, it'll probably take me about a year to recover from this damn thing. So... Yeah, uh, before we did this interview, I was uh, filming the stage, and I was I made the comment that, you know, you pull out all the stops, man. It's all about the music. It's about the art. It's about having a good time, and you got to do it right, man. Uh, obviously, Prince is a huge influence of yours. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's it's a big thing, and, and uh, I was with a, a touring Prince tribute act for two years, and and uh, and then you know as the guitar player and then it's very dear to my heart and we just love doing it so some of the most fun music there is so so we have a great time doing it and I, I love it now when I, we're both veterans of the music scene we've been in a lot of bands we've done this our whole lives essentially um, I've had a hard enough time getting a three-piece and a four-piece band together <laughs> to play and to be in sync with each other. How do you get this together and, you know, summarize it? How do you get it together? There's a lot of moving parts and a lot of dancers, a lot of stuff. I mean, what's the, what's the secret? You just got to find like-minded people. And in the case of Prince, it's easy to find like-minded people because a lot of people love his music. And, you know, everybody in this band is a Prince head and just loves him. And so it was, you know, when I said that I wanted to do it, you know, everybody was like, okay, we got you. And so this is what we're doing. I, I see this contraption here. What is this hoop? Can you tell me what this hoop is about? Lyra. And we're going to have a, a beautiful girl uh, doing trip, uh, flip tricks and all kinds of, you know, basically we've got girls dangling from the ceiling. <laughs> it's kind of like we call it funk de soleil. So... It's uh, you know, it's 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 gonna be a lot of fun, you know. So, at what point of the show should I be prepared for this awesomeness? Oh, I don't know. It's it's uh, uh hold on a second. Hey, I got a remote control for that. I'm gonna put it on at the last minute. Sorry about that. That's um, okay. But uh, the uh, yeah, it's it's it, 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 you know, the the cool thing about the thing is it's very fluid and all of this kind of stuff. The stuff that's on this contraption, I'm hoping that they'll get this damn scissor lift moved. Yeah. But but this whole contraption here is uh, an aerial rig and so there's going to be stuff going on through the entire show so this, this is part this of the show stage too stage over here is going to be part of the part of the show too so we're going to we're going to actually be you know uh we're running two stages and the floor tonight so it's going to be pretty cool it's going to be pretty wicked well i'm looking forward to it have you got a moment real quick to show me your guitars and your yeah, amps real quick back there. Come on. all right we're going to walk backstage here Hey, bring that back. Let's look at that first. Let's see that. Since that one's the uh, obtuse one. Uh, any tickets at the door? I don't know. I don't, I don't, think, we sold, I don't think we sold out. Nobody told me, nobody told me we sold out. When they call, it just goes to voicemail. 
Yeah, I, I'm too busy. I'm sorry. I, I, I can't do that. Uh, I don't think it's sold out. I, I really don't. I think everybody should be able to get here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So this was kind of, you know, this was something that was sort of a catalyst. A, a couple of friends of mine decided they wanted to make me this as a, as kind of they they really, you know, knew I loved Prince and everything, and they kind of surprised me with it. Um, and in a way, it kind of was a catalyst for getting together and doing the show because now I get to show it off and play it. Um, you know, it's his cymbal guitar that he called Habib. Uh, of course, famous in the Super Bowl when he played it and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's a recreation of that. It's a custom made thing that they had commissioned. It's a very, very nice guitar and it's worked out really, really well. Um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm really digging it. Um, cool. It's not the kind of thing I would play all the time, obviously, but to, to actually have an excuse to play it with this show is really awesome. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Yep. And I know you got your, your beloved PRS is here. Yeah, I can I got, see. I got, I, got, I got Mojo. You know, is it Mojo? That's, that's Mojo. That's that's the Brazilian Rosewood Neck PRS that um, Mr. Smith gave me in, in the year 2000, 24 what? years ago. And it's been my main guitar ever since. Absolutely. Um, and then I also have uh, the one I call Ike, which is uh, a, a, also a McCarty. Um, it has a Brazilian Rosewood fretboard. Um, but he, he actually called this a tanner. It was a... Um, a guitar that he um, somebody commissioned that was a private stock design where they put a 513 pickup in with two modern eagle pickups and a five-way blade and that was one of the first guitars that he made with a five-way blade and then he he uh, he gave me one of those too he just called me up and said I want to give you this guitar and I was like <laughs> wow that's very cool thank you and it's been uh, also a really great guitar for me too it's beautiful yep yeah and then I've got a couple of cool things I've got my uh, my custom uh, Steve Weller guitar that he made for me that's uh, you know that's it's it's just a cool design it's a semi hollow uh, but it really rocks and it's a really really cool guitar got a Wilkinson uh, tremolo on it and locking tuners and and uh, put some Duncan pickups in it and it's all pinstriped out and it's just yeah, I awesome. like the pinstripes it looks almost like a Vega tremolo right and then 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 we've got the red one that I call Ruby that's also Steve's design and it's just it's a cool guitar you know it's they're they're both just it's something different Prince was known for playing his own guitars and so it's kind of cool to be able to step up there and, and have something that nobody else has yeah people go what the heck is that yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And I then totally the last respect one that. In line is, 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 is one I call Goldie. It's a it's a, uh, a, a CE22 that is uh, gold top, and uh, this is kind of my Purple Rain guitar. You got to have a got to have a guitar completely tuned and ready to play for Purple Rain, so it's all in tune and ready to go for the big last song. Perfect. So I hold on to this one and just use it for the one song. So cool. Let's take a look at the amps, okay? Uh, yeah. Got just a minute. All right, cool. Okay, so, so I got Yoda stuff. Yeah. So so what's going on here? This is uh, my the heart of the rig is my uh, Rivera knucklehead reverb, and I've got an ox box that's going uh, to the to the front of house. Uh, I don't even have a mic on the cabinet. The cabinet is just basically for my monitor, but the cabinet is really cool. It's an old 1968 uh, Marshall 100 watt. Uh, 412. It's got uh, original cream back 25 watts. Cool. In it. So that's a real 68. It's the real 68. Yeah. It only has the hundred in the look. Didn't have the logo on the front. It only had the uh, hundred in the corner. And it's a battle beast. But boy, that thing is a magical cabinet. It just sounds so good. Then that's I've cool. got I've got a Rivera subwoofer. This is the 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 Los La Bottom subwoofer that just it it adds so much big bottom end to the tone, and you don't have to play as loud as you normally would because you've got all that bottom end that you, I can shake the floor with this thing, but I'm not peeling the paint. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a very, very cool piece. They don't make them anymore. Um, I used to have a 312 that had two 12s in the top and the sub built into the bottom, but I lost that in my house fire, unfortunately. This was in a road case, and so it was preserved. Yeah. So I still yeah. have a sub. That's cool. And you got the ox box, no mics, yep. and these are kind of like side fills. These are your yeah. Uh, this is this is basically my 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 sound, and then the front of house is getting the ox box, and it's all tweaked, and it just sounds phenomenal. I love the ox. It's one of the best pieces I've bought in about 30 years. And these are just your wireless and uh, that's wireless, yeah, yeah, and and uh, I did have that Eureka preamp on my headset for a while, but I'm not using it currently. Uh, but yeah, that's just for my wireless and it also has the brain for my G system, which is uh, over here on the pedal board Are you a G system? Yeah, I've got a TC Electronics G system that's given me, you know, all just basically all my effects all the stuff All the amp tones are all through the, the Rivera 
Um, this is just run through the loop and gives me all of my effects and special stuff. I've got a couple of things that are suitable for prints, like the, the pog is for what you do when doves cry, you know, with the, the octave stuff. Got to have the purple flanger to do Darling Nikki. Got to have a wah pedal. I've got an envelope filter. That one, that, that old shitty DOD is one of the best sound envelope filters I've ever had, and I still plunk it on my pedal board. And then I use the Digitech Talker Talk Box, which is a real great feature that uh, with my headset, I can walk around and actually talk box, and people are like, where the fuck's the tube? You know, so <laughs> That's so it, cool. That's so cool. It's a very, very cool stage effect to be able to walk around and do the talk box. So that's it. That's kind of the rig. Man, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, dude, I appreciate you taking the time to, um, you know, do this for the channel. I know we're buddies, and yeah. we're but I appreciate that. And uh, I can't wait to see the show, man. It's going to be awesome. awesome. So, Thanks so much, Marty. Thank you. All right, here we are backstage. And uh, your name, sir? I'm Joey. You're Joey? And yeah. uh, you're the keyboard player. I am. Right. Good memory. Yeah, man. So I'm that's. Red suit guy. I'm digging the red suit, man. So as far as this show is concerned, uh, what kind of keyboards are you playing? Uh, what kind of keyboard should I say? Uh, uh, Yamaha MODX7. So, yeah, got everything kind of programmed into there. It's got everything like kind of split up and everything, so I don't have to. So I can kind of imitate playing like four or five different keyboards at once. So, are you running MIDI tracks? Are you running any? Are you doing everything live or what? Doing everything live. Now, I mean, the drummer's kind of putting a lot of hit tracks and stuff in there, but. I'm pretty much doing all the keyboard stuff I'm doing live and right and left hand and jumping around. So. <laughs> There's a lot of moving parts to this show, obviously. Um, and I got to say, bass, keys, and drums are an integral, very integral part. The dancing and the guitars and the singing, obviously, is oh, everyone yeah. notices it, but you're carrying a lot of weight. So, I mean, any thoughts on that? Uh, well, I mean, it's, it, it's a teamwork thing. I mean, we're all kind of doing it together. So, I mean, we're kind of carry each other's weight when we have to that's what's kind of cool about this project what would you say is your favorite part of the show my favorite part of the show oh gosh the, the beginning how can you miss the beginning and the end well like i haven't i haven't seen it yet so i'm looking forward to yeah, it man yeah. it's gonna be good i'm excited so uh what do you think's the most complicated it's complicated stuff plain print stuff is oh, yeah. I, i've played it before myself yeah. and you know there's a lot of energy there's a lot of interesting keys a lot of chord right. changes right. what do you think is probably one of the more challenging things regarding the show i mean probably the, the thing that's the most challenging is all the prep work and everything you have to go into it, it because i was like getting the sounds right and all that kind of stuff and getting everything kind of worked out as first transitions because i mean the songs and everything are, are just fun to play. I, I, I'd say that, you know, getting it down to where you can have fun with it, that's the hardest part. Because once, once you can get past all the technical stuff and get into just having fun with it, that's what's good. Right, and having the right sound is important. Because with these songs, it's got to be right because everybody knows it. It's iconic. Yes, it is. And, and you you got to get you got to kind of tap into, like, the 1980s. And Do you program the sounds? I pretty much program all the sounds that I use, yeah. That's fascinating, man. I re respect that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks for talking to me about it, man. Absolutely. That's very cool. Absolutely. And have a great show. All right. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. So here we are with, I guess you could say, the background singers and the dancers. Yes. And how would you class? Background singers, lead, dancers. We're doing a bit dancers, of everything. Dancers, aerial lead spots. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. I, was, I saw some sound check, and you guys are very impressive. And what, what's your name? Ainsley. And your name? Erica. Nice to meet you both. Yeah, the double A's. Yeah, yeah the double A's. All right, yeah. that's cool. All right, so um, how did you get involved in this project? Well, for me, I have been friends with Todd for a, a long time through my now husband, and then I've had my dance company, and he asked us to come do some of the big top shows with him, and then it just kind of grew from there, and then it was like, and now we're doing a print show. And here's the man. I love my out. job. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Zilla had to get his head in here. I know. So yeah, we had the first one. What was it like? I think it's almost to the day, like four years ago or something. Yeah. Twenty. And then we had COVID and all that kind of messed up our role. Um, but yeah, that kind of put the wind took the wind out of the sails of yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. We're back on it again. One. So third one. There was a weird COVID one. This is a. This is. You one must one be very excited one. to be doing this tonight. Yes, in front of a live audience and having that interaction and all that. And then Erica was in that first one too. Yep. It was a slightly different show. Have you been do both doing this the same time with each other? Yeah. Yes, we we've both 
have done this for um, for the three years, the three times that we've done it, not three years, but the three, three times. So this is our th third show, and um, but before we had another, we had another dancer. We had two other dancers, mm -hmm. and then I one was moved away. right. One moved away. I was one of the backup singers for the dancers for just like two or three songs, and so for this one, this is going to be a little bit more because um, there's more singing. It's a three-hour show. I know it's a. We're doing a lot show. more yeah, it's long. singing, dancing. Do you guys <laughs> rehearse this stuff together without the band? <laughs> we oh yeah, did. we had to. Oh my god. There's a. And this is you guys do it to the Prince songs, like uh, off, like you know, do you stream it and and, and yeah. sing and dance well, yeah, together and work on your moves? Yeah, as long as Todd's to... doing the same arrangement, but it's Todd, right? It's Zilla, so he's, he's like, I'm he's, gonna do this, I'm gonna put this in here. I'm gonna I know, and we're like, gonna, gonna be a guitar solo, Todd's maybe like, extend the section out, exactly. right? Yeah. So <laughs> once we get the Zilla arrangements down, then we do it to to the live band exactly. recordings, you know, exactly. So yeah. we can. But you guys are pros. You can handle it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Every, everyone here. I mean, yeah, we're all pros. We're all. I mean, we're all so grateful to work with each other. We all have so much deep respect for each other. I mean, everyone, aerialists, dancers, band members, yeah. we're all like, we're, we're family. We call each other family. Yeah, I get that. Totally, yeah. yeah. So you're the one that gets on the hoop. I get on the hoop, yes. At what point of the show is that going to happen? When do I get on Or is it multiple times? <laughs> There's multiple times. The There's Sheila E section. Yeah, the Sheila E section, and then... P control that's towards the end mm -hmm. and then I don't think we're doing it for uh, listen there are so many things that have happened during the show that some of it we're gonna have to the do aerial by the fly. stuff is crazy because you never right. know to Be get here how you're you gonna can, have to improv a little bit how right? you can rig stuff yeah. from the ceiling right because stuff, so um because to adjust a little bit well my wireless my wireless isn't going to be working, so I'm gonna have to hold my mic and then get up there. So I don't know how that's gonna look. So that's what you're saying. Like, are you gonna be on the other stage as well? I know there's there's another stage no, out there. No, I, we are. She and I are both on this stage. So the hoop that's there, that is what. Um, okay. We're using. That's what I'm using. Yeah. Right. And if the hoop's not yeah. there, then we're improvising. <laughs> we're in, but it's gonna look good. I gotta ask. It's there's a lot of improv, a lot of unknowns. Are you guys calm? Are you are you nervous? No, 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 Just no, no, show no. energy. Got, got going on. No, I mean no. The um we're we're calm, we're excited. So you know it's not to be mistaken for anxiety and nerve. It's we're excited, we're happy about it. We just understand that we have to roll with the punches because unexpected things happen, such as my wireless isn't working. Yeah. So now there's so like, many like and that's what makes parts. it fun in a way. Exactly. You know what? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And then like and there's so many things happening. There's so many things there's happening. There's like bound to be something where someone might not be in the position we thought they were, and we just we'll just roll with it. Exactly. We'll with yeah. it. So that's why I'm saying like all of us are so professional and we work so well with each other that we can just pick up the slack and you know and even so we're just playing with you know amongst ourselves and we think Prince would have wanted it this way I think so too <laughs> I can definitely tell that the the energy and the positivity is there and you guys are going to definitely bring that to the stage tonight thank you, thank so, you much. so much thank I look forward to seeing it thanks for talking thank to me you. I appreciate Enjoy it thank, thank you Marty <laughs> All right. All right, here we are with Christopher Williams. He's a drummer for uh, Todd Zilla's Big Top Prince Tribute. What's going on, dude? Not too much, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for talking to me, man. I'd love to see your drum kit. But first of all, man, you are a busy, busy dude back there. I saw you playing tambourine, trigger, and stuff. I can tell there's a lot of stuff going on, man. It's, it's nuts. It's, a <laughs> it's been that kit is four years in the making um what i've done is taken prince's original audio any isolated tracks i could find or some that i could make um i have one shot samples that i've tuned to the specific tunes and everything so the idea is every song has its own electronic drum set so the drums that are pumping out of the pa are prince's drums plus there's all the sound effects um like in a song like P Control, you know, the Are You Ready or the Little Bat. So are you triggering those sound effects with like an Octopad or what, you know, something like so that? I have, so I have two Roland SPD-SX units. I've got the SX and the SX Pro. And then that handles, uh, there's four pads behind the kit. There's five pedals, two Roland 
multi-pad units and a Pearl Mimic module that's triggering the kit. And the kit itself is three rack, two floor, two, uh, three snare drums. There's a double pedal back there and there's a trigger on each pedal plus a secondary bass drum pedal to the right of the double pedal with an angled beater. So um, in a song like 1999, for example, I can play the regular kick sample with the right foot and then either the left foot or the right foot on the single pedal will have the juga 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 cut cut. Because the whole, the whole purpose was we wanted to reproduce the sound of prints and the backing loops and everything without having to actually run loops. Well, it has to be that way, first of all, because, I mean, the human element, I would think, Absolutely. you know, and if when you rely on too much technology, if you're on a click and everything's programmed, it could be uh, a nightmare. Totally. It's, <laughs> I know all about nightmares. The last, <laughs> the last show we did, I was running everything triggered out of the computer, and the night before the show, the computer took a crap and I had to completely rebuild the show on a different machine and, you know. Well, you're definitely, I'd say, the, the engine to this rocket ship. I mean, the heartbeat, uh, it's kind of cliche to say, but, y- yeah, you, you have an unenviable uh, task, and, uh, you know, it's pretty amazing. It's impressive, man. How, you, so you have a different sound for, like, for every song? or Every song, every song, unless if we're doing... Um, Two back-to-back tunes, uh, such as, I don't know, like if we're doing I Would Die For You into Baby I'm a Star, that's the same kit because it's the same sounds, so I don't need to switch between. Yeah, if they had like the same same cuts from the same record, they a lot of times they produce it with the same thing, but it's with 80s music or, you know, any era, but especially the, the era of like, you know, Prince's music, it's... Uh, definitively uh it's that song i guess what i'm trying to say without that sound it's not gonna sound like prince it's gotta have that much like the keyboard patches too like like in dove's cry you know yeah totally there's that thing has to be there and you can run it from a computer but again then you're stuck with a click track and you know if todd wants to go let's go man let's Let's play. Let's have yeah, fun. Got it, man. You mind if I go on stage and take a look at sure. your kit? I'll walk you through. All right, cool. All right, here we are on the stage. Are we, you want to go up here and take a look at it, or we are going to do it down here? Uh, I'll take you up there. Okay, cool. So All right, we'll, cool. We'll start down there. Always have a backup. So I've got two 10-inch snare drums. That's the backup for that. Yeah, and then underneath the Porter and Davies, which is basically a, a seat thumper. It instead of using a, a loud subwoofer, you sit on it and feel it. So a backup and a backup for the backup and the backup pedals down there. Should something go sideways, we've got extra pedals, pads, anything. Be prepared. <laughs> you Always you are prepared. totally prepared, man. You must have been a Boy Scout. <laughs> I was actually. <laughs> We blows too. <laughs> we blows. Me too, man. I still got the hat, believe it or not. <laughs> We've got this fun apparatus because, as if juggling all the pedals and everything wasn't enough, I'm singing too. So that's. Yeah, fun. I did notice that. Um, so this guy comes in and out. Are those Van lot. Halen stripes on your octopad? Oh yeah. Hat? And the seventy-one quarter. I didn't drill it out, but it's a seventy-one quarter. Velcro Get out. Right yep. It is. A seventy-one quarter and a striped octopad, quarter. dude. That's killer. Yeah, man. So then uh, this is the SX Pro. This is, I think, these came out just over a year ago, maybe. Yeah. Um, this is the, pre- the predecessor. It's a bad Mamma Jamma. The Mimic is down there. So essentially, the left pedal and the far right pedal, those are like if I need an extra set of hand claps or a crush or an endorphin machine, there's a cowbell going through it. Um, in cream there's a cowbell so I'm playing that with the left foot there's a trigger under there it's an Italian company called Foot Blaster so all four of the bass drum pedals have triggers on them underneath so I can get individual sounds even from a double pedal if I need to Um, we've got a 4x10 a 6x10 Mike Mangini signature everything is pearl Um, 10 
12, uh, excuse me, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. We have the four pads coming across. This, this is tremendous. This is my baby. I searched 20 years to get one of these. This <laughs> yeah. is a, a late 80s, early 90s. It's a pearl carbon fiber free floater. Yeah. Um, they didn't make too many of them in the world. I looked for 20 years and that's the first one I found, <laughs> so I snagged it. But it cracks. Uh, Sabian symbols everywhere. It's kind of a mixture, mostly AA and AAX um, on this gig. But as cool as this kid is, man, I have to say the Prince uh, Tambourine. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, where so does one find a Prince Tambourine? At Paisley Park. That's where it came from. Really? Paisley Park. Yeah, I, I took a tour out there in um, December of 22. So it's however, it's almost how apropos, man. Yeah. So it's almost like a like a rain stick oh, it's slash okay. slash <laughs> shaker slash tambourine. So at the end of 1999, I pull this guy out. And That's very cool, man. Yeah. Well, so dude, this oh, is. Oh, and then uh, I don't know if you saw earlier the bass drum lights up. So I got, didn't notice that. We've got lights behind the front head. I'll take you around the front. Right okay. Here, so. Yeah. Let's check that out. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So I made this head um, four years ago for the, the first Prince tribute that we did. So it's a clear head, and then I, I did all the artwork, put it over, sliced this out, but it's still a solid membrane. And then the triangle is the breather port. Um, I've got a couple kick drum mics mounted on Kelly Shoe internal mics. All the drums are internally mic'd with Kelly Shoe system. Um, Jeff Kelly's great. But yeah, so we can whatever mood somebody wants to be in we can make it sound activated even um you leave it on uh sound activated during this or do you change no. this during the show do you I'll, I'll reach over and change it during the show or um i have a good friend that's working with me on this gig so um if he wants to mess about with it he can yeah, or yeah. I'll, I'll keep it on a trap table <laughs> to my left and change the color how i feel I've got a couple of my amps at home where I've, I've loaded them with those things, and uh, it's cool, man. I've, that's a great idea for a kick drum. Yep, man. Well, dude, I really appreciate it. This is awesome. I, I really appreciate you showing us the kit, and uh, yeah, absolutely. have a great show. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Check us out. We'll see you soon. It's getting close to showtime. Thought I heard the sax. I thought I heard the sax, man. It's filling up pretty good.